G'day guys, Morsey here, welcome back to Morsey Plays Minecraft, episode 59 and the first episode of 2016 and hopefully you guys have had a good holiday season and we're back now with some more Morsey Plays Minecraft and the first thing I'll mention is the new intro and I'd like to know what you guys think. I was playing around with some uh, music production software and just thought I'd do another take on my intro. A lot of you guys seem to like the intro originally when I did it, but one thing I do find is that it's a little bit slow. And uh, now that we're getting quite underway with our world here, I wanted something that sort of showcased a bit more of what we've been doing for those of those of you that uh, only watch the first section of the video and sort of get bored and turn away. So speaking of getting bored and turning away, let's not do that. And let's start up with our first project for the year. And it's a new little project that I've come up with. It's a staircase. Uh, not really, not really a staircase. We've got a project that's going to be built on this staircase. And one of my New Year uh, resolutions for my channel is to grow it a bit more and try and work a bit harder on the production value. So you might notice that already. But uh, one of the things I wanted to add here is a counter. And my idea is to add a counter that is going to track our subscribers. So our subscribers are at currently at about 3,200, I think, roughly. And I'd like to try and get somewhere around the uh, 10,000 mark by the end of the year if I can. Uh, that's a pretty high goal, but I reckon we can do it. And one thing I want to do here is build a little tower to track my progress. So I'm going to get to building here. We're going to do a little bit of a time lapse and uh, get right into it. So there you have it. That is the subscriber tower. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that little time lapse. I know it was very fun for me and I think it turned out pretty well. So this is only part of the build here. This is obviously the big structure and what we've got is some lamps all the way up the middle and the idea is that as we get more subscribers these lamps will all light up all the way up to each individual level. We've got 2,500 subs, which have already passed, 5,000, 750, and 10,000 as well. So there is quite a lot of work to do here yet. So a couple things we need to do is there's some really cool redstone devices that I'm going to show you. There's a be a, there'll be about uh, probably three or so that I'm going to show you that are really handy. And uh, we're going to get on with those and see how they're built. Okay, so the first thing to give this a little bit of perspective is you could see that I was placing comparators all the way up here. And the way we're going to power these lights is by pushing cauldrons all the way up that middle column there. There's a skeleton around here somewhere. 
it might be underground here. So we're going to push cauldrons all the way up and the cauldrons will be full of water and they'll give a redstone signal to the comparator. The comparator will power that block there which will power the redstone on the side and that will light up the whole line of redstone lamps. Now I was originally going to do just one row of lamps but I think it looks better with three. The only downside is for each level we go up one of the top corners, either that corner or that corner, will also be lit up. But I don't think that's a huge issue. It's still going to look really cool. And I think having three lights is going to look better than just one light in the middle. So how are we going to get all these cauldrons pushed up here, you say? Well, we're going to take a few pages from one of my first YouTube videos ever. And that was my TNT pump. And the TNT pump was designed to move TNT up a central column and you could stack it up with as much TNT as you had and then you could just go through and light the TNT and it would just keep filling up again. So we've got this little underground area here and under here is where we're going to store all our cauldrons and the cauldrons are going to get pushed over to this spot and straight up the tower. Oh, I'm off center. Am I? Yeah, I am too. Okay, so they're going to get pushed over to this spot then. Uh, let's just fix that right now, shall we? Uh-huh. Yeah, I was off center. Good thing I uh, did this part last. All right, so they're going to get pushed straight up through the middle here, which means I have to adjust some of the walls. So let me just go and do that. Okay, here we go. So I've made the room a little bit bigger and I've filled it up with a bunch of redstone as well. So we'll just very quickly go over how this thing is going to work. So here we have 100 cauldrons and that is 100 for the number of um, levels on this tower we have. And these cauldrons will get pushed up by this piston row here. And this is the part of my TNT pump that I was speaking about earlier. It's a cool little mechanic where if you have sticky pistons on the back row, regular pistons on the front row, and then redstone on top, you can send a pulse to the redstone and it will push this row of blocks over by one each time and increment itself. So it's really quite cool and uh, you can see that in action on my TNT pump video if you want to watch that at some point. Um, but yeah, that's uh, one of the cool mechanisms that I'm using for this uh, bigger mechanism. Uh, next I'll show you this little guy here and this is a bit more of a mechanic than anything but this is actually going to count the number of cauldrons that we've pushed. So obviously when I want to refill this row here because these will all get pushed up like these ones have been, when it's empty we want to make sure that it can fill up again with all these other cauldrons and they all get pushed over as well. So to do that I've got some pistons over this side with a bunch of gravel stacked up to the top. The gravel is going to help us push the whole lot of cauldrons over. But in order to count how many times we've actually done that, we need what, some way to do it. So what I've got here is when the piston here pushes a cauldron up, it also activates this piston, which shortly turns off this torch and allows one single item to move along by one hopper each time until it gets right to the end and activates this one, which means that that row is now finished and it can extend another row. A little bit complicated but you'll understand what I mean if you uh, have a look at the TNT pump video. Okay let's take another look at another little mechanism I'd like to show you. Okay here's the next mechanism I want to show you and this one is a blockchain extender or a conveyor extender and this is going to allow us to make these cauldrons go up in one big row without actually coming out sideways going up another 12 blocks and going back in again. So it lets us uh, sort of skip by the 12 block push limit of that piston down there. Now this one is a design by a guy called Amos Redstone, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. And I saw it on a video by Cube Hamster called Sharing is Caring, some of you might be familiar with that. And if you wanted to go check them out, I'll put the links in the descriptions below. Make sure you let them know Mozzie sent you. But basically this is a really handy little uh, machine that is going to help us a lot. So as you can see, we've got the cauldron sitting right here. And if we imagine that that system downstairs pushes another cauldron up, this system actually activates and moves it up one higher. And we're essentially bypassing the 12 block push limit. Not, uh, not literally, but uh, 
it's going to work for us the way we want it to. So that's going to allow us to go all the way up and we'll build another one when we reach the next 10 levels and another one and another one and another one. And that's how we're going to get these cauldrons all the way up the back here. Okay guys, so I've finished that all the way up. As you can see, we've got all of our block conveyor extenders all the way up there. And there's one more piece of the puzzle which I want to show you. And that is right here. So, let's see if I've got the bits. I don't think I do at the moment. Alright, under here is a hopper. And if we throw this stack of cobblestone, it won't get picked up from that one. Let's throw it again. There we go. It got picked up by the hopper. You can hear there's a note block and a dropper sounding. And this is our little clock system. So, what's happening here is this picked up all the cobblestone. And it's feeding into this dropper. And every so often, the dropper is actually shooting an item out, which is immediately picked up by this hopper. That sends a signal down through here, hits a note block, travels all the way down here to this repeater, and this is going to be what powers our little system here. So once this little guy is connected, it will start pushing these out for every tick of that hopper and dropper combo and this will just go higher and start lighting up the top there. We've got to put some items in here to make this work correctly. So there'll actually be one in this guy. Let's put that in there now. So we'll put one item in here and then the second item will go in this one. Okay, and that is our whole system just about ready to go. So the last thing to do is to give this a test. So let's jump up here. All those items are collected into this chest here. And the idea is I'm going to be doing this with probably something valuable. I think maybe some diamonds or something. And for every diamond we chuck in, that, that constitutes for 100 subscribers. So if we throw in uh, three, that would be 300. Two and three, and that would go up one, two, three levels like that. So that's how it's going to work. And uh, now I'm really excited to give this a try and make sure it actually works. Okay, guys, heaps of testing later and a lot of rebuilding. I pretty much had to rebuild most of this central light pillar because we made some mistakes there, and also I had to redo the whole back here. I'll start with the back. So initially we had those um, compound pusher systems, which are really cool uh, systems, but they don't quite work for what I needed. They basically hit their push limit too early. Um, and I realized that we'd have to change them out to something uh, that could push a little bit higher. And while I was doing that, I also realized that each time that they push, they'll leave a gap. And initially I had 10 lamps in a row here and then the 11th row was a marker to say this is a thousand but um, I had to change that so now we've got nine lamps and the 10th row is the thousand marker so because we did that um, that was just due to how much these could push I had to change this whole setup underneath as well so we had to remove a whole row of cauldrons so that now there's only nine per row so nine by ten there's actually 90 cauldrons here but if you add one for each level it goes up, that makes a hundred. So that's the 10,000 mark that we want to get to. But in order to make these work, I needed to count the number of items accurately. So if I put 20 items in, I would expect this to go up to 2,000. 2,000 subscribers, of course. But instead, because I'm only, pushing, I'm only pushing nine cauldrons at a time, it would only go up to 1,800. So I needed to not necessarily put in 18 items because I want to show 2,000 so I have to put in 20 items and I have to basically make this think that it pushed a whole nother row and the way I did that was by getting over here so there's an item that travels around in here and this is our little circuit once the item gets to uh, this one this is on the ninth cauldron that it pushes out because there's no more cauldrons to turn on and off this redstone, it has to think for itself. So once an item gets to here, it goes up through this little channel here and turns the torch off again, which skips it through to the tenth item. 
and what happens is that these pistons will actually fire when there's nothing in here making that the tenth pulse and then once that's all done it'll push a whole nother row in so it's almost like it does lift up ten cauldrons but it actually doesn't it only lifts up nine uh... hopefully uh... You <laughs> you understood that and your brain didn't explode but uh, it took me quite some time to work all this out so uh, let's have a quick look what else we've got I made this uh, dropper hopper system a bit more permanent so the, uh, the items that I throw in will get burnt in lava and I thought that was kind of fitting so I'm going to be using diamonds so yes all those diamonds are just going to get destroyed basically but I thought that would be quite cool we might just put a block here and one here as well, I think. So the items will still shoot down into that hopper, get counted, but then they'll burn in the lava. And I think that's about all I need to show you. So the only thing left to do now is uh, to get this guy running. Alright guys, so I've got 32 diamonds in my hand and 32 represents the 3,200 subscribers we've got at the moment so each one of you guys watching at the moment has one of these diamonds somewhere and we're going to start this off and throw them into the system so thanks for everyone who subscribed so far and hopefully some of you guys are brand new and you're watching this later on you'll be part of this too when we get up to that 10,000 mark alright let's chuck them in and see how we go There we go, 32. Awesome, the lights turned on. We've got uh, 32 rows here. You can see what I meant before about that last little block being up there. Let's see if we can zoom in just a little bit here. There we go. Awesome, 32, 32 lines of lights for 3,200 subscribers. And that is how this system works. We should be able to see this from quite a fair way away as well, which is really awesome. This has been uh, really fun to build, and hopefully you guys really like it. It's really just to um, just showcase some of the things you can do with uh, just a bit of know-how, and also to say thank you to a lot of you guys who have stuck with me for so long, and hopefully we can get that number right up to the top. I don't know if we'll get it done this year, but... Uh, We'll try, so if you do know anyone who wants to subscribe, or if you're only new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, see if we can get up to the top there, and uh, that would be fantastic. Alright, let's go take a look at something else. Alright, here we are back at the Guardian Farm, and I've been doing a lot more work on this thing. This is the main part I want to show you. So, my design was a little bit flawed, I didn't really think about it, but... Um, I, I briefly touched on this last episode, I think. I'm going to have water streams that come down here, and initially I had just another whole level straight down the middle, and that wouldn't have funneled these guys to the centre, so I actually had to drop them all and do these tiers that go down. And so each of these levels goes down by seven blocks, like that, till it gets to the end here. They fall through the lava, and uh, can I, I don't know if I can go through here. Uh, I might be able to just squeeze through. There we are. They come down through into this area. And this is going to be where they get killed. And where we can get XP from them and so on and so forth. We've already got some bits in here where a few have fallen through. But uh, another thing that I realised is that once I did that, uh, I needed to stop the water. So... We haven't set up any of the water yet, but if the water was going to start from here, it would cascade down to this level, then it would cascade along here and down into here, and then it would screw up all of these water streams as well. Oh, that was loud. 
So that wasn't going to work either. So what I had to do is make this an eight wide section. So this one's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, that's six now. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that makes the water stop right here. And then from here, I can go like that. And that should go all the way down here. And then that. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I didn't think it could get through there. <laughs> Uh, I just screwed it up, but uh, that's where that would go. Oh, of course, there's a block missing, so I've got to redo this lava now. But um, yeah, that's where it's going to end up. So that way we can funnel all these guys into the middle, where that needs to be lava. I'm going to have to get rid of all that, aren't I? Oh dear. Um, little note on how I did the underneath here. So because I couldn't go, you can't make the rails run this way because they don't pick they don't go through this block section here so I had to do like a zigzag and you can sort of see um, you can sort of see it here actually see it sort of zigzags its way around and that means there is only one minecart this guy here which goes all the way up to the top level there all the way up here and picks up every single item all the way up to here so that's how we did that one um, and then the same on the other side, and they both have a little unloading station here, which is probably full at the moment. Yeah, it's quite full because it didn't go anywhere yet. Um, and then eventually they will all lead into this central chamber, where they'll fill up some chests and other things, along with the other ones that I've got up there too. So that's where I'm at at the moment with this. So I've already got heaps and heaps, you might already notice, I've got heaps and heaps of lanterns already that uh, this thing has been producing like crazy and uh, I empty this regularly and it still fills up really quick so that is awesome very happy with that so the next thing I'll have to do here is to get rid of those blocks of obsidian I just created and replace the lava I've got to shrink this row here by one block and add one block to this one to make this eight so one two three four five six seven and once that's eight I can get rid of these rows of signs as well and then I think I've sort of cleared out a lot here I need to get rid of that roof section that's over the blank space here and the same on that side and then I need to do some caving in the area so there's actually still quite a lot to do but already it's producing really great quantities. And also, uh, on the last episode, uh, I believe Vilmango uh, mentioned that the reason why the minecarts aren't picking up these items on the edge is just due to my version. So for those wondering, I'm still on 1.8.1. Um, I don't know why I haven't upgraded, I just haven't. Um, I know that I don't want to upgrade to the point where you can't do holes in bedrock anymore, just initially while I get a few holes sorted. But uh, apparently there's a way you can do it now anyway. I saw on um, RKF Walter's channel, he made a way how to do it with uh, head headless pistons. But anyway, why have I got soft lighting on video settings? Smooth lighting maximum, graphics fancy. Oh, that just looked weird up there. Looks a little bit uh, blotchy. Anyway guys, thank you for joining me on the first episode of 2016. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that episode. I really had a lot of fun making it. It obviously took a little bit longer for me to prepare than my other episodes I've done. I'm going to slowly get better at it, hopefully, and that will mean more interesting content with uh, a little bit more finesse to it. And I like, I sort of like the way it, it came out so far. Tell me what you guys think of the new intro. Uh, the video that I used for the intro was just to sort of um, hash it out and see how it goes. 
Uh, one option would be to use footage from previous episodes. And if you guys want to go through and find some cool parts of other episodes you'd like to see in the intro, um, let me know. Send me a message on YouTube or, or Twitter, and uh, we can maybe implement those into the new into the new intro video. Um, I still don't know as of recording this how I'm going to end this episode, what kind of song I'm going to use or anything, so maybe uh, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you again next time.